Hey everybody, welcome to Corner Club episode number five. In this episode, we're talking about the Integra reveal. Whoa, they knocked it out of the park. Or did they? I'm not really too sure, but we're going to talk about it a little bit here. And also, we're touching on SEMA show 2021. Definitely some insights into, into SEMA and how uh, I kind of take an approach to SEMA and how that's supposed to be benefiting you guys. So, uh, give us a listen and enjoy the show. Okay, Graham. Howdy. How you doing? Son of a bitch, dude. <laughs> yeah. I am... A little busy. I'm tired. Yeah. Well, I'm also a little bit amped up, so I'm like running around here. I just got back from L.A. Yeah. from Integra Reveal, and, um, you know, that was like, I woke up at 5, and then I went to bed at 1 in the morning, uh, 5 a.m. till the next yeah. 1 a.m. Yeah. So... It's a long day. It was a lot of travel for what was really like... <laughs> two and a half hours of event <laughs> yeah yeah and the actual reveal was like five to eight minutes or something ten minutes yeah it was maybe? like eight minutes yeah. yeah yeah but you know what though uh who got to be there yeah yeah very few people press it was a media thing mm-hmm. um actually a lot of friends uh, yeah a lot it of, seemed like you knew a lot of people uh yeah yeah it, it, the more of these things i go to the more i'm finding that actually i already know a lot of these folks yeah um People that I might not even have expected to see there. But so in that sense, it's kind of a good networking and it's kind of a good, you know, just get to see people again. Yeah, it's like But a party. then, of course, you know, oh, and then we get to see, it actually was a party. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to see the, the new car before. Well, I guess it was at the same time as everybody because the live, the live stream. stream. Yeah. But I have to tell you, um, and I think we should just dive right in on this, right? Mm-hmm. The car, I think yellow was the only color that made sense for them, Yeah. but was not a good color. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm not super particular about colors usually, so I'm not like the guy. Well, no, what I mean is, is the way that it came through over media. Oh, well, yeah. And even just seeing it in, in person, mm-hmm. it's not flattering. Actually, mm. it, the Phoenix yellow isn't flattering to the DC2, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. It that this was indie yellow, which was an NSX color, yeah. which I don't think is particularly flattering on the, the NSX. NSX either. Um, it's kind of a flat color. Now this car had it had some pearl and some metallic and stuff like that. It's a nice color, but yellow it's like so prominent that you almost lose so much of the detail to the color. I agree with you there completely. Yeah, because cameras do tend to flatten tones in colors. Uh, unless they're really fantastic cameras. So on anything less than like a cinema camera, it's going to flatten out and become sort of just a blob. Yeah. Just amorphous. The uh, uh, Tiger Eye on the TLX Type S yeah. is is one of those colors that it accentuates all the yeah. all lines and the curves and well, everything. Well, because it has that dark undertone, it shows shadows and curves really yeah. well. That pearl yeah. really pops off. And the type of metallic that's in it, when the sun hits it, everything just turns to fire yeah but uh this yellow is not that way so but when you think about well for a press release car it would never be white black silver yeah. brown, gray it has to be something like crazy. it will never be any yeah. of those red is an eye-catching color but only, maybe only so much better than yellow yeah um and the blue probably would look really nice yeah. too but I think what they're really trying to show off is that they have this yellow it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be a launch color mm-hmm um, I just don't think that it really helped it out in the media. So, so a lot of the initial reaction and judgment people are making yeah. on this car are based on maybe not the best foot forward in terms of which color would sure. show off yeah. the car. It's a banana, right? It's a banana, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so... What's the footprint like on it? Is it the same size as a Civic? Because you actually got to see it. I didn't measure it. Okay. The specs aren't available. Sure. Um, Did it feel? I asked yeah. how much... <laughs> and I, I got really dodging around. Yeah, so basically, yeah. like, specs, technical details, mm-hmm. if it wasn't in John Akita's speech, yeah. we don't know. We're not talking about it. Yeah. We don't know. So, like, 1.5 turbo. Yeah. So I asked Jonathan, uh, the product leader, I said, hey, SI powertrain, though, right? The same one? And he was like... Can't say. It is I'm a like, 1.5 turbo. Son of a yeah. bitch. All right, well, it's a <laughs> six-speed, limited slip, mm-hmm. 1.5. That sure sounds like an SI. My money is on... SI powertrain. Yeah. My hope is that a little bit more power than an SI. Yeah, like 220 or 230 or something like that. Right. Yeah. So there's that. There's um, 
the the automatic transmission option, which you know in retrospect is probably going to end up being like a ten speed automatic. Yeah. They've got it in the TLX. They've got it in the Accord. It actually works really really good. Good. It's it's not going to be a bad thing. It's a pleasant if, alternative. If they put that ten speed automatic in, mm -hmm. uh, no loss on that. It shifts quick. It's very smooth. Yeah. Well, I also know on the Civic platform, the CVT was a limiting factor for a lot of people when it came to making more power. So that'll be a huge breath of relief Absolutely. for people who turn to an Integra. This will be a stronger transmission for sure. compared to a CVT. And I think that the CVT makes more sense in a Civic, more of an economy yeah. model than a sports model that the Integra is supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. People looking to pinch every penny out of their car, is they're not going to be looking at Acuras anyways. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Yeah, they yeah. probably shouldn't be. Yeah, um, probably not. <laughs> All right, so what else, what else, what else Civic? Uh, I mean, sorry, Integra. Okay, so <laughs> look at the elephant in the room. Like yes. everybody freaking is bitching and moaning about this thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Acura hit the mark with the Integra. Mm -hmm. They did exactly what they intended to do. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a success in that respect in terms of the design and the concept, mm -hmm. right? We know enough about this car to validate everything that we said or meant much of what we yeah. said in the previous podcast mm -hmm. where we were given uh, the predictions, yeah. right? This car I knew was going to disappoint many, many people. Well, sure. And... You know, I've seen polls done by some folks that report anywhere from 70 to 90% people not liking it. <laughs> well, yeah. This is super street followers. This is, you know, tuners. This is, this is the people that love the DC2. Yeah. And they were like, I want another DC2. Exactly. Yeah. They were never ever going to get that no. and everybody was completely deluded to think that that was even remotely possible yeah right um would it be possible for them to do a three-door i sure was hoping that they would mm -hmm. but i mean a three-door of any of any aesthetic Nature, yeah right but they came out and said it's going to be a five-door yeah how are you let down that there's a three-door not a three-door <laughs> Well, they literally said yeah. that there wouldn't be. And then once you know that, and that you know it's based on Civic, how do you not 100% expect that this is going to be a lot like a Civic hatchback, but an Acura? Yeah, I mean, I, I keep thinking about you. You referenced Batman in one of the clips. Yeah. And I keep thinking about that, where it's like, I wanted another Michael Keaton back Batman, you know? I wanted there to be a third one, but instead it was like, was it Val Kilmer? And then it went well, to George, George Clooney. George Clooney, yeah. Val Kilmer, George Clooney. And then, then, <laughs> years later, they finally were like, actually, never mind, let's try Christian Bale. Let's put, let's yeah. put, let's make this more serious. Yeah, and give yeah. him throat cancer. Yeah, um, exactly. But, but, you know, if you were disappointed because you're comparing everything to the yardstick of Michael Keaton and of Tim Burton, then of course you're going to be bummed out, you know, by these new movies. But they all had their moment in time. They all suited their culture of the time. And Let's be honest, the Christian Bale movies have way more horsepower. They do. Like, yeah, so, a lot more. But, so, but it's, so it's a new beginning yeah. for Integra, and yeah. really it's just the use of the name. Okay, so now let me get something else out, mm -hmm. right? Where did Acura go wrong, right? Sure. They could definitely use the name, but they absolutely need to use that name to appeal to a performance yeah. enthusiast. They have to respect the base that is going to appreciate the Integra name. Yeah. New buyers, or uh, sort of like the buyers that don't have the fondness of memory of the older Integra, mm -hmm. but they know about it, and they want the new. These people don't really necessarily care what, what, it's what the Integra ever has been yeah. or what it's called, yeah. right? So if you're gonna call it the Integra, I, and one of my followers made a really good point, Mustang, Camaro, yeah. Challenger, 
they all look kind of like the old car, yeah. but it's very clearly a new car. And maybe it's easier for them to get away with that because those are two-door models. Well, yeah, and I feel like the same end game is in sight, but I feel like maybe that's what it is really, is that Honda's always had this really bizarre kind of identity crisis where the people who love it the most are the ones who extract all this power out of it and all this handling out of it, but, and God's honest truth, when the engineers built these cars, they built them as economy cars for the everyman. Mm -hmm. And so they They have, just happen to be great yes, performing cars. exactly. And so, inevitably, you end up with this really hardcore enthusiast base that's like, the Integra, oh, it's a DC2. It's a Type R. Yeah, it's a all GSR. Of the, and this brings up another really great point. I don't want to lose my previous point. Yeah. Um, which was what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a good one, I'm sure. No, the use of the Integra name, yeah. I think, gives them a responsibility to respect the people that are going to value that, that name. name. Yeah. Right. Just the same way, this car, they could have called it an ILX and offended yeah. zero people. Yeah. Right? And it could have been the exact same car. So instead, they used the name Integra, and it turned out to be kind of a big tease. Yeah. Right? They, in some respect, this car is the perfect car for them to make, and maybe it would have been better to call it ILX. Yeah. Right? Now... If they wanted to call it Integra, I think that's fine. I think that they probably just needed to get a little bit less down the line of brand identity. These, um, all the Acuras have a similar grill, chicane headlamp, all this. Mm -hmm. I think that those design language things that they do nowadays, they're a little annoying, <laughs> but I understand kind of why they do it. But if you think about this brand, right? Mm -hmm. They want people to recognize it as an Acura. Yeah. Right? No matter which model Acura it is, they want you to recognize that it's an Acura because mm -hmm. they want you to go to the dealer. Yeah. But here's the thing. Back in the 90s, <laughs> they didn't give a shit about no. brand in that way. An Integra looked like an Integra. Yeah. A Legend looked like a Legend. They were like totally different An cars. Accord yeah. looked like an Accord. A CRV was a, they didn't have to have styling cues that complemented the other models in the lineup. A yeah. Prelude looked totally I mean look at a 92 different. Accord, a 92 Prelude, <laughs> yeah. a 92 Civic. Yeah. They all look different. Totally different. And yeah. then a 92 Integra mm -hmm. was way different. Yeah, well, like the circular head or no, the 92. Well, that was the DA, box, right? But then oh, yeah. when they went from the D so when they went to the four round headlights, mm -hmm. that was no kind of design language thing. No, you didn't find it anywhere else in Honda. No, never. Yeah. And, and, and Honda's not the only one. Sure. Like none of the manufacturers made all the cars look kind of the same. Yeah. But now they do because the brand is so much more important now mm -hmm. versus how it was important back then. Yeah. And so because of that, they were stuck. They had to design it this way to look like, you know, a family member yeah. with the rest of the Acura And it lineup. does. It looks like a little baby TLX now. More right. or less. Yeah. Right. It, 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 it is. Yeah. And uh, to address the sidebar comment, some folks, oh, look, looks like they did another TLX. Look, this car is a lot smaller than a TLX. Yeah, no doubt. It's a lot smaller. All right. The TLX, and I think the TLX is a fantastic looking car, well designed. Wide hips, long hood. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of those design elements in this car, but it it is a much tamer version. This is the everybody car. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Which, and they priced it as such. And they priced it as such. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> next point, right? What is this Integra? Mm -hmm. Right? This isn't the hopped up model. No. Right? This isn't... Uh, cannot be compared to a Type R or Type S or no. anything like that. It can't even be considered like a... This is like a LS Integra, mm -hmm. right? This Integra is, hey, look what we made, an Integra. This is where they start. They start at 30,000. Yeah. They're all going to sort of look like this. This is just the beginning, John Akita said. Yeah. Right, this is the beginning. Maybe, hopefully, a spec model. Mm -hmm. Maybe expecting actually type, type s, s model yeah because you told right. me they're trying to really push type s like right. throughout the brand and look yeah. at the difference between an fk7 civic hatchback and an fk8 civic type r yeah right it's the same basic car but they've really it's done a lot different. with the type r yeah i'm hoping that we can see that kind of a shift with type s mm -hmm. uh integra push it to 40 maybe a little higher yeah have a better powertrain have maybe a different um, headlights or something like this. Yeah. It, I, I don't think that they're going to go completely wild with a Type S, but it will be a different model. Yeah. And I, I mean, at least in my mind's eye, I would picture it being 
upwards of ten thousand dollars or more over a base model, probably. Probably, if it receives, this and it type should of be, you know, maybe even having a lot of that Civic Type R type performance, but mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little lower because it's an Acura. Yeah. We're going to have more amenities brought into, mm -hmm. and Type S by definition is street performance track capable. Yeah. Type R by definition is track focus. Yes. Track ready, mm -hmm. right? And that's. That's the goal of that car. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't see a Type R uh, of this, so you can lay that to bed too. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's that's addressing some of the like big moans and groans. You know, is it a Civic? No, it's not a Civic. No. Does it have a Civic platform? Yeah, it's just like every other parts. Integra always has. Yeah, but I think you know to to bash on it sharing genes with the Civic totally disregards the fact that the modern SI and Type R are really pretty cool cars. Yeah, they actually, are, yeah. Like, I mean, it could be like, based off a worse car. Yeah, I was like, why are you upset about this? Yeah. It's like, this bacon cheeseburger's based off this cheeseburger. Right. I'm furious and, about this. Yeah, you know, if you think about it, right, what entry-level Integra mm -hmm. has ever really been yeah, like a hot rod, right? Like crazy. They're not. Yeah, they're and I, not. that's what I was getting at when I was a talking. A base about. RSX is like yeah. lame. Yeah, it's not much. And that's what I was getting at, was that I feel like when people remember the Integra, they remember the like wind in the hair racing version where they're like, well, yeah, the Integra, man. And they totally disregard all Wait, of but, the LSs that got thrown out and all the GSs yeah. that got thrown out and all these just junky ones that were. You know what an LS Integra was good for? Commuting. Engine swap. Yeah, right. Engine swap into a Civic <laughs> that didn't come with that engine. But think that's about what, That's what that LS was good think for. Think about who originally bought that car, though. And it was like, overwhelmingly, it was probably like older people. Great point. Disposable income. We talked about this uh, at the party as well with some people. Yeah. The Integra that you want to buy today, the DC2 Integra, the random 99 Integra yeah. that you want to buy today, who owns that car and how long have they owned it? <laughs> yeah. It's somebody who's 50 now or something yep. and has had the car since it was basically new. Yeah. So somebody who's had the car for 20 years maybe bought that thing when they were 30, right? Yeah. Who did they expect to buy this Integra? The same exact person. Yeah, the same people. They're not expecting hot rodders to yeah. buy this car. Well, and because really, too, it's like, I'll bet you if you took a survey of all the people that complain that it's, that it's oh, it's not a Type R and they don't have one, how many of those people have the disposable income to even buy well, a Type Well, see, they R? wouldn't. If they don't already have... Even if they made it. If they don't already have a Civic Si, haven't had mm -hmm. it for a little while, and then want to graduate up out of that car, mm -hmm. then this is probably, probably isn't the car that they're looking for. Yeah. You know, we're not... I mean, they want to sell the car. Mm -hmm. They want to sell a lot of these cars. Yeah, and, and, and so then, they're, therefore, they have to make it an attractive package for yeah. everyday average people who just want something sporty. Because it's a product, ultimately, and I'm sure they do no shortage of market research about who actually has the income and wants to buy these things, and then, you know, how are they going to get them to buy it? Yeah, it's, I mean... It's not just, like, they're not building toys for people. They're not trying to impress the internet. It's, it's no, a business. They really, they really aren't. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's just so comical. <laughs> it's just so comical well, you know. how vehemently, actually angry some people yes. are and keyboard cowboys oh, saddle man. up there's a new integra i understand <laughs> sir that you're unimpressed with this integra they were never after you yeah and and they, but pro and they probably drive a it, mustang it, it, anyway it, and it was a tease you know in in all of this sure in all of this my my exiting point on new integra is Part of me wishes they would have just called it yeah. an ILX. Yeah, because personally... Because an ILX... I had no expectations of that, yeah. This will be an amazing follow-up to the previous ILX. Yeah. Right, if they, yeah. if they called it ILX, all of this baloney wouldn't exist. No. no, and everybody would have viewed it as a net gain. Because the, the other ILX was kind of boring. Right. Yeah. Now, the car itself, mm -hmm. right? Frumpy, boring... Big butt, looks like a Genesis, looks like a TLX. What all is this? Hey, like, I like the Genesis. <laughs> I do too. I yeah. don't know that it looks like the Genesis no, either. I, I mean, don't agree. It, it's anytime a new car, I mean, we'd already did the, the opening podcast was an NSX looks like a, yeah. a, a Corvette. People do these passerby comments like mm -hmm. they just mean something. And you know what? No, it, I, they're trying to have this car have its own identity. Yeah. And did they really give it much flair? Not exactly. But they this really is the base didn't. model too. But it's also yeah. a base model. If you look at 
a box stock press photo of a, of a 94 Integra sedan, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a plain, ugly looking car. There's not much But to we see. can make them pretty badass, can't we? But the regular one is, is plain and whatever. Yeah. You know? Um, even even a, an RS Integra is an unimpressive looking car. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't see it that way. No. We see potential. Yeah, yeah. Right? We see what that car could be. Mm -hmm. Now there have really there's been a few photoshops lowering put wheels and stuff on sure. these on these releases and the car already looks better, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so but here's the other thing: this car was just a prototype, yeah, right? So it is it is going to change. It is the first, like most complete version that we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a pre-release car; it's a prototype. So what they're really doing is. Um, Aaron with VTech Academy is sort of assuming that with enough feedback that they can still change this yeah. design. Yeah. I think that we're pretty locked into how it looks, to be honest with you. It's going to be, yeah. Um, maybe some of the fascia's front and rear isn't really mm -hmm. finalized, but that's not the part that people have the problem with. No. People have the problem with, you know, the general body. And I don't think that that is going to change at all. Probably you know, the not. sheet metal, they're yeah. not going to change that at this stage. Yeah, that's a lot of money invested in making right. that. Right. <laughs> so, but they got this prototype model, things that I noticed about it, that um, <laughs> if they made it to production, I would be really impressed. Yeah. Right? Four-wheel disc brakes, mm -hmm. of course. Two-piece rotors in the front and the rear. Wow. Vented rear rotors. That's... The rear brakes on this car are gigantic. Yeah. They're huge. Huh. And I thought, wow, did they put front yeah. on the rear also? And I looked like, no, the front is bigger. Like, <laughs> if they put those brakes on that car, mm -hmm. and I don't think they will because it would be, like, super overkill. I'm sure, yeah. Super overkill. It looked nice, right? Mm -hmm. But that's one of those design details that I think that we can expect to see Brembo brakes on a model at some point. Do I expect to see that on a base Integra? That would be impressive. It would be cool, but, but probably not. I don't yeah. think so, right? Because it's got to be a volume car. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a car that people can easily maintain. And the Brembo's are just a little bit more money. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking first release of an Integra is not going to have those brakes on it. Mm -hmm. um, but they sure looked cool, yeah. right? Um, the tires were 235 all around, 19-inch okay. wheels. Those are pretty big. That's totally yeah. uh, doable for that car, I mm -hmm. think. You know, ma again, maybe an A-spec would have something like that. Uh, the base, I'm guessing, would probably have something along the 18-inch range. Mm -hmm. But the car needed to present well. Also, it was lowered. You could tell there's almost no tire gap. <laughs> the car is going to look worse yeah. in production, <laughs> right? So that was sort of the best foot forward, then. This is really yeah. a best foot forward. <laughs> um, there was some commentary on the tail... Uh, the tailpipes, the tips have yellow paint inside. I don't think I even noticed them, honestly. Well, you'll see it when you look at the video a little closer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's yellow paint on the inside of the tips. Hmm. Now, somebody said, oh, my God, that's god-awful. Hopefully that doesn't make it to production. I said, there's no way they're going to have painted insides of the tips on a direct-injected car. They'll turn black yeah, instantly. in a week. I think they did that to highlight the fact that it's got dual exhaust exposed yeah. tips. Mm -hmm. right? Just to make you look. Right, just to make you look. The way the exhaust is configured, it's a, a single pipe, splits into a Y, and has two small mufflers in it, and then this weird sort of like loop around underneath there, hmm. so that they can make it, I think it was for packaging reasons, but you know, I'm imagining an exhaust upgrade for this car will end up being just a, a muffler delete, yeah. or like a gigantic resonator underneath it, and then open little, pipes out the back. Yeah. So. Uh, I did sort of measure the outlet there, and if that makes it through production, then we could do a quad exhaust for it, which would be kind of cool. That'd be cool, yeah. Um, just sort of thinking in the future, you know. Yeah. Um, it looked, they weren't showing off the interior. I guess it probably wasn't done. The car had an interior, and it looked like it had kind of like Type S inspired like seats. seats and stuff. It yeah. had an orchid looking interior. Cool. The windows were tinted, but you could still see yeah. in. It looked like it had a, a lot of what would be like a TLX interior, which is actually a really nice interior. Mm -hmm. So um, that looked pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the jewel eye headlights, even on the on the entry level model, I'm, I'm glad that they've put like upgraded looking headlights on all the whole range. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that's that's all that. They went with a lift back instead of a hatchback. Yeah. Which is nice. 
I think yeah. that I think that that complements um, what, I, what Integra is supposed to be. I always loved wagons, personally. I loved the TSX wagon. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. wanted to get one. Yeah, so. well, wagons don't sell. I know. They I know. sell even less than coupes do. I know. And it's, so it's That's just, my soapbox, though. Yeah. I can forgive them for not having a, a Type R or whatever, but I'm You're like, not alone. Why man. can't you make a wagon? Yeah, no, you're totally <laughs> not alone. But, yeah, they would sell a couple of thousand a year, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, that's just not what they're looking for. They need to sell a lot of these cars, so. Yeah, and yeah. I think they will. Honestly, I mean, because like looking at it from the perspective of like a daily that you want to be relatively quick, fairly nimble, fuel efficient and comfortable. I'm mm -hmm. like, tick, 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 tick. Like it's yeah. got it. It's, it's more stylish. Yeah, you know, it's, got it's, all not, that. it's not going to be as common. Yeah. And, as and it's going to go, it's going to go compete with something like the uh, A class from Mercedes, you know, but it's, yeah. but it's going to be considerably cheaper. Yeah. It's going to be much closer to purchasing something yeah. you know, like a Civic Si, yeah. but you get all these extra um, features. And know? let's not forget that that 1.5 liter engine in an punchy. SI. It's punchy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well over 300 horsepower yeah. on a tune. And then with the E85 thing, you can get even more. Yeah. So it's not like this car isn't going to be um, like an exciting car. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think that maybe... I mean, I but we're going to have to get some, some new... We're going to have to get the more exciting one. From a basis, from a launch pad standpoint, mm -hmm. this car, I think... I think that they hit the nail right on the head with what it needed to be mm -hmm. to be a successful platform, to be a successful car. And whether or not the general internet of Integra fans is going to embrace it, I'm sure they will at some point. It will never be a real Integra. But I think what we're talking about here is, you know, like Mustang Mach-E isn't a real Mustang. Yeah. Well, no shit. Yeah. But they had to call it a Mustang because Ford doesn't make cars anymore <laughs> unless they are called Mustang. Yeah. That, that was literally, that was they got rid of all of their cars. We yeah, don't make cars anymore, just Mustang. Yeah. Okay, so now any cars we make are, are Mustangs Mustang. by default. Yeah, if it's so a Ford and it's a car, it's, branding. it's a Mustang. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's just how it is. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions? Did you have any questions about... Anything else uh, related to this? Uh, to the Integra? I don't know. Or the event or anything like that? Mm. It looked like it was, I mean, this is just my observation. It looked like it was a lot of the same kind of cars and things that had come over from Acura's uh, Grand Prix, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's like their marketing Line. display. Yeah. You know, they're just carting it around yeah. wherever they go. Yeah, it, it goes probably, to other shows. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be at the LA Auto Show in so many weeks. Yeah. And, yeah, this is just what they... Uh, were there any rumors of when it was going to actually be released? Next year. Next year. They've yeah. said spring next year. Okay. So... Car buying season. I'm sort of hoping... So Grand Prix of Long Beach next year is in April. Mm -hmm. They're all in on it. The marketing team has to throw down for that. So I'm pretty well hoping and expecting that we'll have at least a pre-production or display model, something that we can expect to be like the dis you know. The real car available the real there, cool. yeah. So cool. that yeah. would be interesting. You know, I asked about any other releases in between now and then. I didn't really get anything. So it's going to be months before we have anything new on this. I think. Cool. They'll probably leak little stuff every once in a while. Yeah, and they might let people like drive prototypes when they get close enough. Yeah. They, given this, given this, uh, what they're saying, what I would hope is that they would maybe fast track or release some information on a spec. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, that it would have been nice, and I think it probably would have got some of the open Internet off of their back to at least allude to a Type S or something like that, you know? Because there's nothing wrong with being there's like... There's only so much they can say. I know, I know. But I just mean to, to simply imply its presence in the future yeah. would, would keep that air of excitement. Because I know the minute that they so. announced well, it... Through a lot of the comments I've been reading, people are... There are a segment of the people... See, there's, a, there's, there's the majority of people who are major hate. Sure. And then you've got a chunk of people who are accepting, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got a minority of people who are, this is cool, yeah. right? But again, we're only talking about auto enthusiasts here, people that we know, that people that know Integra. Yeah, and right? actually take the time to go on the internet, look it up and talk about it. Well, just a small yeah, sample. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is your... Only a chunk of people. You're this big. You're this big. Yeah. They're going to get plenty of people at dealers with this car. No doubt. Okay. All right. I think we covered Integra. Yeah. Yeah. We've covered it pretty well. So, did, did you want to continue on into SEMA then? Oh, 
I think we should do a different one for that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and, well, okay. All right. So, you brought it up. Let's, SEMA, I can make it quick. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. I went to SEMA last week. And you go basically every year, right? You've been going... I have been, yeah. Yeah. How uh, many years have you gone? Since 2016. Okay. So, this was 16, 17, 18, 19... Sixth year? Fifth no, year. fifth year. No, because okay. we had to yeah, skip yeah. Oh, 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. right? Um, now, uh, uh, SEMA is an industry thing. Mm -hmm. Right, so there isn't a lot of like just Joe Schmoes walking. Well, there are a lot of Joe Schmoes walking <laughs> around, but they're not really industry people. Mostly, it's industry people. So it's a great way to network, expand business, learn new things, see new products, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I don't go and look at the car builds. I did that the first year and lost my ass on time. <laughs> like you just cannot Too much. look at the cars and get work done. Like it's just not. Conducive, yeah. right? If you're there to actually do work. And the people that really are there working and into the cars, well, they're working because of the cars. Mm -hmm. Like, they're car builders. They're invested in the cars. I'm not invested in the cars at all. Yeah. So, therefore, I don't really care about the cars. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I saw a lot of people there. Now, there were a lot of people missing. Yeah. So, th the big question about SEMA this year was, what's it going to be like? Because, you know, post-pandemic or late pandemic or yeah, mature whatever pandemic the hell or whatever is, the yeah. hell we're in right now, mm -hmm. um, who all is going to show up? Well, a lot of vendors did probably have some trepidation. I heard various reasons about this. It wasn't necessarily because uh, they were worried about the virus. There was a lot of buzz about who was going and who's not going. So if Enough people said that they were not going or kind of on the fence. That'll make the other person on the fence yeah, about going. Yeah, tips the balance. And see, the thing is, is, if all you have to go on is, like, you know, public chitter-chatter, mm -hmm. then you'll be encouraged not to go. Now, the show was smaller. Well, I shouldn't say smaller because there was the same amount of space taken up. It sure seemed Square like... footage, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it took up... And it was even bigger because they used the new convention center across the hall. Okay. Or across the way. And... There was tons of stuff to look at and a lot of ground to cover, but it was not as dense. Gotcha. You could just tell there were a lot of open spaces where there might have normally been a vendor. Mm -hmm. There was um, many fewer peel, people walking around. You can actually get around, which was nice. And actually, word from a lot of uh, the people that I talked to agreed with one of my feelings, which was we kind of like it better this way because <laughs> yeah. you can't get around, right? Like, you can't get from here to there. And it's not that the booths are that much jammed up it's just again foot traffic well yeah it's all these dudes who aren't in the industry yeah yeah you know so and go check this out man. yeah Look at like this thing. all they give a shit about is the cars yeah. and so like that would be me if i went it's yeah. not a car show you know so what, what you have is so many people who are there just checking out the cars mm -hmm. that you can't actually get around <laughs> so i i'm <clears throat> SEMA's revenue must have been down because less booths, less foot traffic, all of this. And I would want them to be a healthy organization. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. I was kind of glad not to be birdie by. And, and, I, and I filled up every day. You know, we had a lot, we had a lot to do. Good. Um, and I came back with a lot of great uh, stuff. Cool. So, cool. you know, no, no love lost at all for SEMA. It, just, it was actually kind of nice not to be slammed the whole time yeah but my big takeaway from SEMA to share with people I guess I don't really have one because I treat it like a like a vendor thing yeah yeah well I guess then the question that I would have is is there any kind of product line or anything that you saw there that you're going to try and like step towards maybe stocking or well selling we something? I mean it, it it almost falls kind of independent of SEMA like Fortune Auto we, we okay. signed on as Fortune Auto dealer Right, mm -hmm. but I did that before SEMA. Okay, I just I haven't loaded in the product yet. Gotcha. And it was an opportunity to go and, and meet and talk to those guys. And even then, I didn't get an opportunity to actually talk to them. Mm -hmm. I went to the booth a couple of times and they were busy. Gotcha. But it's like, okay, yeah, Fortunato. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be selling that. Cool. But um, and 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 where to like have made that um, connection might have been at SEMA, but I already made it. Gotcha. Um. What else new? Oh, hey, this shipping company, right, says, hey, we can help you save on shipping. Like, does anybody give a crap about that? No, nobody gives a crap about me saving money on shipping. Yeah. Unless I can pass those savings on. Sure. Which, you know, would be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, some of our shipping, it, it's creeping up. Shipping's getting very expensive. Yeah. So, you know what I go? I go and I 
you know, I, I talked to the business um, services people, and there's a shipping guy there, so he's running our numbers and see if we can save us some money on shipping. There you go. Totally unsexy, totally boring, but that's the kind of try thing I'm trying to do. That's business. Another one, um, you know, uh, software to get more reviews through Google gotcha. and utilizing text as a service to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by this, right? I text with people a lot. Yeah. It's hard to manage those texts sometimes. Um, if I had a service that would not only like maybe help get us more reviews, but mm -hmm. then also um, help us communicate as a team over text. It's not just in my own phone, in my own pocket. Yeah, just tons of individual Well, that could be really, threads. yeah. No, everybody would appreciate that, but none of y'all would know that I was doing it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All that would be is I would be a little less pulling my hair out mm -hmm. when I get too many texts and phone calls sometimes. Yeah. So, SEMA. Exciting, right? <laughs> I'm not there for the car build, sorry. I don't yeah. have SEMA coverage. As a business owner. Yeah. I go as a business owner, I network with people, you know, mm -hmm. I, I got, what was my big thing coming out of SEMA? The biggest thing was the invite to Integra reveal. Well, and, and <laughs> that, that, that was worth it. it. That was worth so, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I got more than that, but anyhow. That's cool. all I got to say about SEMA. Cool. There's, no, there's yeah. really nothing too exciting. I know, it's just funny to me, because it's like I've always wanted to go. And, you know, I've been to a number of other, like, You've been to large car shows. You've been to Auto Salon, what, twice? I've been, yeah, twice. And you haven't been to SEMA. And I've, and I've also been to <laughs> Festival of Speed in the UK. Oh, my but, yeah, goodness. But, I've, yeah, I've never been to SEMA. Never been to SEMA. So maybe one of these times. But I would totally be one of those guys. It's just like, yo, look at this car. Yeah. Like, i got to shoot some video of this. Yeah. How much horsepower does this make? Yeah. So what's that under the undercarriage yeah. there? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. No, is, I'd be I the guy. I don't care. I don't care at all. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You're there on a mission. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's less of an expo. It's more yeah. of a trade show. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Well, all right. I'm glad we talked about that last. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> okay, so should we sign off then? Yeah, let's wrap it. Okay. Um, you know, there's more to come. I actually had a person specifically asked about a technical talk about suspension stuff. Okay. We, you know, um, I think we I think we got to sprinkle in a couple of more topical things that are not just, uh, you know, current just, events. Maybe, maybe, yeah, not just current events. Maybe yeah. stuff that's like, let's answer some questions or let's yeah, like. Yeah, well, you like, and we don't need to go into it now, but I was making a remark about blow off valves. Yeah, right mass there. airflows yes. concerns with blow off valves. Yeah. And, yep. Yeah. So. And you know what? I think that that's the kind of thing that we'll be able to give some nice perspective on, too. So, mm -hmm. Cool. So stay tuned. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank Thanks you, for Graham. joining us, guys. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah. And uh, please don't bitch us out about Integra. <laughs> Actually, leave all the comments you want. It's yeah. just good for the algorithm. Go ahead. Because there's no more dislike button anyways. <laughs> Did you hear that? They removed it. No, I didn't. YouTube removed the dislike <laughs> button. Yeah. So, like it or nothing, losers. Who the hell dislikes somebody's <laughs> video yeah. just because maybe they didn't agree with the topic or I've something? I've seen that before, though. It's so obnoxious. People will review bomb people. Anyways, you can Whatever. all weigh in on that, too. You can type dislike in the comments. <laughs> all right. All right. See you guys. Peace out.